Hello viewers and welcome to Randomized Gaming and let me introduce myself I am the editor of Randomized Gaming Random Gamer Ribbon and I welcome you to this mini review video that's part of our now playing series and in this video I'll be taking a quick peek at the recent Cotton reboot which has been released on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch and it is, as the name suggests, a remake of the original Cotton game. But before I say anything more, I just need to announce that I have to kindly thank PR Hound for providing Randomized Gaming with a PlayStation 4 code in order to look and preview this title. So the first question some of you may be asking is, what is the Cotton series? Well, the Cotton series is an arcade shoot 'em up series that has been going around since 1991. There have been a number of games in the series, however the last one of any real importance to us shooter fans was Rainbow Cotton, released in 2000 on the Sega Dreamcast. After that, the only other major instalment was released Japan only in 2003, and that was Magical Pinkacho Cotton, which was based on Pinkacho arcade sort of machines, mechanical things that I'm not really a big fan of, I have to admit. So until this reboot, this has been the first shoot 'em up in the series since Rainbow Cotton, and it is, as I said, a remake of the original game. Now, this is not a direct remake of the original arcade version that was released in 91. This is, in fact, a remake of the Sharp X68000 version released in 1993. And the reason I need to differentiate the two is the fact that the Sharp X68000 version is more like a special edition or director's cut of the original game as it featured numerous changes from the original 1991 arcade game. Now the aim of the game is simply to blast your way through six stages and seven bosses in order to recover all seven of the Willow Sweeps. And you play as Cotton, the heroine of the game, whose the game's own title is named after. Along the way, Cotton has to recruit the help of a fairy known as Silk, and these two become budding companions over the course of the series. Cotton herself is absolutely obsessed with Willow Sweeps and is always trying to eat them. So it's fair to say she probably doesn't have the healthiest diet. And the aim of the game, as with any horizontal shooter, is to blast your way through all the enemies trying to rack up as much score as possible. All six stages from the games follow a very similar format, with them each having a sub-boss in the middle of the stage and an end of stage boss as well. Shooting the enemies also drops a range of power-ups and you also get crystals that you can shoot to change their colour to either give you additional bombs or award you higher scores as bonuses. And the end of the game culminates in a boss battle with the evil Fairy Queen. So that's a very quick and simplified explanation of the gameplay of Cotton. Now this remake, which is the full title of Fantastic Night's Dreams Cotton Reboot, is a very complete package as you effectively get three separate modes. You get a brand new arranged remake version of the Sharp X68000 game with all new visuals, graphics and a recomposed soundtrack done by a number of guest composers. You also actually get a rendition of the original Sharp X68000 version as well, so you effectively get the original 93 game and the new 2021 game. And you also get a new time attack mode that allows you to basically like a caravan mode where you get a 2 minute and 5 minute mode to try and get as high a score as possible in the time limit. Unlike many of the other modern games in the genre which are plagued with absurdly high difficulties, this is actually very, very welcoming. The Sharp X68000 version is a very, very mild-mannered shooter, and this new rearranged version, while more difficult, is still very much in the sort of traditional old-school early 90s arcade shooters that were far more enjoyable and relaxing to play compared with the later bullet hell shooters that really haven't done the genre any good because they're so brutally hard and Cave have been really bad for that because Cave have turned them out time and time again and often as I've actually seen professional Cave players say quite a few of the games are more luck than skill because often they will actually put 
attack patterns that you cannot escape or dodge because the game doesn't include a complete defense and that's design failure 101 with a video game you should be able to finish a game without taking a hit if it's a really good shooter if it's down to pure luck that you're not going to take a hit then that's just really badly designed and there is a reason why the newer Dodon Patchy games only have about 30 concurrent Steam players. I mean, that's really, really pathetic. That does sadly say something about Cave's modern bullet hell shooter output and how unpopular they are. Whereas something like Cotton Reboot is very, very fun and very, very family friendly. It's not going to drive you crazy with blowing your way every second. This is very much a mild manner shooter and a great introduction to the genre if you haven't played it before. I would highly recommend this over anything Cave has output in the last decade. So I'm going to talk about the new content added in for this new arranged version and then I'll go and back through and talk about the older two versions of the game. So I think the primary selling point of this new arranged version is the new scoring system and the dual fever mode that's been added. So the original game has super attacks in the form of magic spells and this rearranged version does add in two additional magic spells and two new secondary attacks as well into Cotton's repertoire. The new scoring system is very interesting as it allows you to implement a special gem attack when you charge up the bar that when you shoot the gems will then give you a massive bonus. On the downside it does fill up the screen with score points everywhere making it hard to see anything going on when you use it but it is a great way to score huge points and it's entirely up to you the player if you want to use it or not. The other big change is that when you shoot the gem crystals your shots actually this time around go through and effectively diffuse into two additional shots giving cotton more firepower. In the original game if you used to shoot a gem they would absorb the shot. Now one of the big changes a lot of retro fans probably won't really think about is the fact this game has gone from being a sort of 4x3 game into a widescreen game and that's actually a big big change that does mean you need to increase the firepower if you're increasing the enemies on screen that's something Ghosts and Goblins Remastered didn't do and is an absolutely horrible remake as a result because they upped the number of enemies on screen but didn't up the firepower that you had so that then put you at a huge disadvantage making the game vastly harder than the original arcade games the developers behind this Cotton remake have got it spot on. They have increased the number of enemies on screen in the remake, however they have increased Cotton's firepower strength exponentially to match. So it gives you an all new looking and much more dynamic looking shooter. So there's a lot more enemies on screen but you at the same time as Cotton have a lot more firepower to counter it. It's a perfect balance and it's a nice update to see. It's much more colourful, it's a lot more vibrant with all the shots and everything going on, but so it can get a bit hectic once you throw in the gem levelling system. Cotton's attacks increase as you defeat the enemies. You actually have an XP bar that goes up. Of course, if you die, you go down levels, so basically you want to avoid dying, that way keep the shots at the stronger levels. You have the magic spells, there are additional magic spells to this remake, and magic spells have two attacks. You have the primary attack, you also have a secondary attack. You also have Silk the Little Fairy who can be used to do a nice little sub attack. Some of the other additions in this arranged mode are the inclusion of the enemy boss's health bars. There's also a little heart icon for Cotton's hitbox as well and Cotton's hitbox in this one is only a, a very small pixel area. In the original game it was more her whole body was able to take damage whereas this one they've reduced to the sort of more modern era gaming of only having a very small hitbox. Visually this update looks fantastic, all the enemies have been nicely improved and redesigned. There's also a lot of new enemies as well, the developers have taken the time to really update the game and add in some additional enemies, graphic styles while updating all the older visuals as well. It does look really, really nice and it does improve hugely on the original game's visuals while keeping within the spirit of the original game. Everything looks like it's just been updated rather than like horribly redesigned as some remakes have done. In total this remake basically updates the Sharp XC6000 version beautifully and basically takes all the improvements that made to the original arcade game and does it nicely. I think my only big big criticism of the game other than the fact you get a lot of visuals thrown on screen 
is probably the fact that you can't practice on the other stages once you've beaten the game so you can't then practice and you can't do a score attack on each stage individually there is a time attack mode but that's a completely unique stage you can't do like a selected time attack where you pick one of the six stages or the seventh final boss and just see how fast you can quickly beat them that would be nice because that also acts as a nice little practice mode as well that isn't in the game at present and that would be something to be nice to add they have actually already apparently added some additional content in one of the patches which isn't available yet but apparently it's out on Switch. Apple and Neagle, the characters from Cotton 2, who is Cotton's rival, have been added as a free character I understand. I don't believe it's DLC, I think it's a free patch update. There is one unlockable character at present however and that is that once you beat the game you can play as Silk Fairy and then in which case once you play as Silk Cotton becomes the supporting character because Cotton can also use Silk to attack occasionally. And of course if you want a slightly slower paced version of the game then you can play the original Sharp X 68000 version and the 68000 version is very much a director's cut of the original arcade game. What it did was remove some of the grotesque elements from the original arcade game. So the second boss in the arcade version actually his guts like fall out and his head came off to attack you. That's been taken out so he doesn't look quite as grotesque. They changed the four stage boss Moya so that in the original arcade version it was like a stone Egyptian statue that had a dragon come out of the center at the very end of the fight. Now they've completely redesigned that boss fight so you purely literally fight the dragon that was in the center at the end but now it's flying around. And the other change was the fifth stage boss was completely changed. Originally it was like a weird tree slime monster and that was completely changed to some sort of slightly odd one-eyed cyclops thing. Overall I think all the changes are largely for the better. There are a few interesting missing effects. So in the original arcade version when the first boss came down with a slam attack you would get this rather cool scaling effect that I think was missing in the X68000 version possibly due to hardware issues but they haven't then added it back in for this remake and it would be something that would be nice to add in. Likewise I would actually argue the removed bosses could have been implemented into new stages for this remake so you could have increased the game by two additional stages. There are some really nice cutscenes in this as well. The one thing I did notice is the last cutscene where you see the enemy queen speaking about cotton looks in the original arcade game very unfinished. It's this really black screen and a little bit of text. That could have done with some additional graphics and I'm surprised they didn't do some new graphics for that in the remake because that would have been quite nice. And you could have implemented the fact that when you've got all the willows in the game then perhaps they could have said Cotton had to defeat two additional guardians thus you could add in those two bosses cut from the original game. Certainly the stone statue had an Egyptian field so maybe you could have added the sort of pyramid Egyptian stage and maybe done something like slimy with the swamp tree monster that was previously cut out from the fifth world from the arcade game. There are different enemy attack patterns in the arcade game as well and the arcade game also had a second loop that I don't know is in this remake. I think there's some sort of additional loot, but I couldn't initially see it. I don't know if to beat the game without continuing the time. One other benefit though is the original arcade game did reset the stage if you lost two credits on it, and that was taken out in the X68000 version, and that isn't present in the arcade, in the new arranged version either. That was a really horrible mechanic in the original arcade version. Overall, it is a really impressive remake with the original music, the updated music, everything's really nice. It is superbly well put together. The updated cutscenes, everything is just pretty much spot on here. It's rare you play a remake which gets so much just about right. And it's really nice to be able to play the Sharp X68000 version, seeing as originally it never left Japan and the Sharp 68000 never left Japan, so it's very, very few Westerners ever played it. Though I can't be entirely sure how accurate it is to the Sharp X68000 version. I think it's a port because they have changed the credits. I noticed they'd updated the copyright and added in some of the Beam staff members. So that's something to bear in mind. I did think I read that the loading screen music had been and the loading, original loading screen had been removed. That would be a bit disappointing seeing as they do have a new loading screen. It would have been nice if they kept the original one in. There may be a few other changes. I can't testify to that as I've never played the Sharp X68000 version. I'm not a connoisseur of that home computer, so I don't know. So there may be some gripes some of the people have with this version. I don't know. It may be at utterly flawless, but um, I'll have to leave that to the Sharp X68000 experts to let me know.
if there are any differences. But overall, I think my biggest gripe, as I said, one, it can get a bit cluttered on screen, and two, it doesn't feature the original arcade version as well, which I think would have been the icing on the cake here. The only other slight thing is whether they could have made the Fairy Queen a playable character, or whether they made the villain a playable character as well. They would have been some nice unlocks. The, the minute I beat the game, the only thing I got was the Silk unlock, and you also unlock the ability to rewatch all the intros. And I think you could change the music between the arranged version and the original soundtrack as well. But overall, I have been hugely impressed with this remake, and it is really really good game and I've been really enjoying my time with it. I mean I've, I've played the previous Cotton games, I've played Cotton 2 on Sega Saturn, I've played Cotton Boomerang and I've played Rainbow Cotton which was a sequel to Panoramic Cotton on the Mega Drive and of course there was 100% Cotton on the SNES as well. And there, it's, a, it's actually a series that's kept a very good pedigree overall and I highly recommend it. If you're a shooter fan, you'll really enjoy it. It's very welcoming. I think if you're a fan of Bullet Hell games, you may find this a bit easy but other than that, I can't really see any other really sort of complaints. I just know some Bullet Hell fans very much like that, that Bullet Hell genre, but I think the Bullet Hell genre is kind of dying out a bit now. I think it's because we need to make it a bit more mainstream, the shooter genre, and we need to go back to the sort of older, more fairer difficulty and probably having more sort of unlock mechanics in games. But overall, I think Cotton Reboot is a really good title, and I think it's a really good one for shooter fans. If you're interested in dipping your feet in the genre, I would highly recommend this as it's quite a well-balanced shooter. There's also some really good games on the arcade archive as well. And hopefully, who knows, maybe we'll see some more remakes of some of the other Cotton games. So Cotton 100% would be nice, or Cotton 2, Cotton Boomerang. Panoramic Cotton, just to see that get re-released would be really nice, as that's very, very expensive these days. But overall, I think this is a very well-put-together and well-packaged game and comes highly recommended. And it is out now on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. And it's also out now on Nintendo Switch. I don't know at present if there's going to be an Xbox release or a PC one. All that leads me to do again, so I'll just give another thank you and mention as a disclosure to everyone that we did receive a copy from PR Hound who provided us with a copy to preview the game, as that does come under endorsements for the ASA and FTC. And to also say, if you enjoy this mini review or the now playing series of Cotton from Randomized Gaming, then please do consider hitting that like button. It is very much appreciated. And of course, please do consider, if you really like our content, don't just take my word for it. Check out all our videos and please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you very much. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this look at Fantastic Night Dreams Cotton Reboot on the PlayStation 4. I will see you all very soon in our next video, but in the meantime, have some fantastic night dreams as the name of the game says.